What's going on folks and Stu's Garage today. Today on Stu's Garage we're going to be doing a little bit of track prep. Um, today I'm going to be repairing my e-brake again. Um, I went to go bleed the thing the other day trying to make it work a little bit better and I actually snapped the bracket in half. So um, I'll show you what happened with that and why it's not always a good idea to buy things off of eBay. I'm sticking with it. Alright so like I was saying my bracket snapped in half. As you can see here, the uh, metal where it bends right here is completely snapped. And now when you pull it, it doesn't do anything. It just bends more. It's, um, so the metal actually tore. So I got to get this out of here, um, weld up a new bracket. And I'm actually going to install it at an angle so that instead of the pull going straight back, it's actually going to pull towards the driver a little bit. And that's a little bit more ergonomic and a little bit more efficient to uh, work with. And um, so in order to get at this, I'm going to have to pull this seat out again, which I didn't tighten all the way down because I knew I was going to be pulling it right back out. Four bolts just like I showed you before. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and just get to it. All right, next up, I'm going to disconnect my master cylinder, which is this bolt here, this bolt here, and this bolt here and uh, that way I'll be able to pull the bracket out without actually disconnecting my brake lines and then I won't have to bleed and have all those kind of other issues. So let's go ahead and get that done. You know, this is uh, what's left of my bracket, so I'm gonna repair it again. Moral of the story here, folks, is, is don't buy any brake off of eBay. Um, I'm sticking with it because I've put so much time and effort into it. At this point, it's not worth it for me. But I really wish I had just gotten the legit one off the brake. But we're going to repair this thing, and it's going to be better than ever. All right, folks, check this out. Um, so, so far, this is the way I'm going to make my new bracket. It's slightly offset, as you can see. And that's just going to make it a little bit more ergonomic for me to pull. Um, so I'm basically just going to chop this up here, weld this to the new plate metal which I think is 1 8 uh, inch steel and um, yeah hopefully it all works out so of course I have to clean the paint off of here and clean the surface of this and then I can do some welding Here's the progress we've made so far on the new reinforced bracket. So all this white crud that you see here, I have to brush that off. I'm going to grind it down and then I'm going to trim this thing up and drill a new hole so that this thing can mount inside the car. Alright folks, we're back at it. Uh, shortly after that last clip that you saw, everything went wrong. Uh, ran out of welding wire. Uh, I finished up welding the new bracket. Uh, and then when I went to put everything back in, all of my screws cross-threaded, nothing would go back together, and it was a very long, frustrating night. But we've got everything back together, and I want to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. So, um, not the prettiest welds in the world because uh, I'm starting to get frustrated at this point, but the bracket is back together, it's reinforced, it now sits at an angle. As you can see, um, not a whole lot of angle, but it still does help, it's a little bit better. Um, the brake lines are a little bit further away from my passenger because I don't want anybody to put their hand on those. I do still need to come up with some kind of a guard for that just to keep that from happening. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the uh, brake lever. I think in the future I'm actually going to tilt this forward a little bit more, which means that I'm going to have to cut and re-weld this section here and reposition it. But um, I'm not going to do that before the uh, drift event we have coming up just because I just don't really have time to mess with it. Um, so the next thing up in order to get this e-brake functioning fully is to slap a new set of pads on the rear. And the reason I suspect my pads is because um, uh, this has been on the car for basically a year now. I haven't had an, a working e-brake ever since I did the IRS swap. And when I did that I put brand new rotors on here. Um, and the thing is, you should always clean your rotors before you install them. Clean them with brake cleaner, scrub them down. Some people even turn rotors every time they install them. Um, I've never cleaned rotors before I had to do this install, and I've never had an issue. However, um, I have had the issue once before. Uh, once I saw it, I kind of recognized it, and I started to see the same thing in this. If you don't clean the grease off your rotors, or whatever crap is on them, uh, It'll ruin your pads the first time you put on brakes, and there's nothing you can really do. You have to throw your pads over, clean your rotors, and start over. 
So I think that's what happened back here. Um, I'm gonna swap out my pads. I'm gonna clean my rotors just in case there's anything left over. And hopefully, I have an actual working hydro. All right, folks, so um, here's the uh, brake rotor and the caliper. Uh, and uh, pretty much this is essential stuff right here guys and the whole point of this channel is to show you guys that you can do this stuff and so this is one of the first jobs that you want to try and tackle if you're totally clueless when it comes to cars um, you know brake change oil change these are like the the bare basics right here anybody can do this stuff all you need is a couple of wrenches uh, you know most likely a jack and you know just a little bit of initiative to, to get this done so in order to normally um, so on most cars, like every single car that I've seen, in order to change your brakes, you're going to have two bolts behind your caliper, okay? You loosen those up. Sometimes you have to hold both sides with a wrench, like right here. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to do that with this one. So you loosen these two bolts. If the caliper comes off, uh, you secure the caliper in some place because you don't want it to dangle by your brake line. Um, and then once your caliper comes off, your uh, brake pads will either be stuck in here or they'll be actually stuck to your caliper. You pull those out, um, you push your piston in, which I'm not really going to get into detail because there's other videos that show how to do that, but you push your piston in um, and then you slap new pads in there. It's really simple. All right, folks, this is where I ask you guys the question. So I just pulled my pads off and I've got one pad here that looks like it's brand new and I've got one pad here that's completely demolished. This was the inner pad on the uh, back side of the rotor and this was the outer pad. Um, I have no idea how this could happen. Um, I suspect pad contamination, so maybe this side had oil on it and it never gripped and this side was doing all the work, but if you guys have any idea what causes this, definitely let me know because that's so weird. Alright, so we're all done and uh, I'm going to give this thing a test pull. See what happens. folks that's about it for today's video um, the e-brake works it's been a year I'm really happy to get that thing working especially right before the track day uh, so on to the next thing we've got a lot of work to do tonight because guys guess what your LEDs finally came in so uh, let me get these things cranked out and we're gonna start seeing some V2s on your cars